Hey, good morning. Good morning. Had a minor technical difficulty of aligning <laughs> the iPad with all of this. Yep. Something got flipped around on us. Um, how are you doing? We just, so Joe and I just spent the last 35 minutes together. And I don't think I asked you how you're, how are you doing? Oh, yeah. I, I'm doing good. Um, mm. You know, in in this weird world that we live in, it's really hard to define what good is. I, I, I was at Target earlier this morning and talking to the team members over mm -hmm. there. That's a question that, that I try to ask mm -hmm. um, people and with sincerity, not just a greeting. Yeah. And boy, the answers you get um, today in, it really is, we're, we're, we're doing things, especially those that are still working, mm -hmm. um, but to define what good is is kind of been redefined a little mm -hmm. bit because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's different yeah what what i would have considered good five months ago is probably a little different now <laughs> yeah. isn't that weird yeah yeah it, it is it is the word that i have continued to use through this whole thing is it's weird mm -hmm. It is a weird world right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of takes makes it, it's a lot of adjusting. Yeah, continually. It, yeah, flexibility mm. has been key mm. here at Westway um, in so many ways, <clears throat> um, but not just here at Westway in our homes. Yeah. Uh, I think of the flexible ways that that uh, parents with children have had to be flexible. Uh, with their schedules to um, allow the things that are needed with their children and helping teach them, mm -hmm. um, helping the teachers teach them through. And, and we've had to be willing to learn new skills with technology. Yeah. And so flexibility is a huge key. Yeah, that's um, <laughs> last week we were, and we were gone. We went to Oklahoma. And it's interesting how... Um, just traveling during this time requires flexibility. Yeah. Um, we yeah. when we drove when we drove down, we stayed overnight in Colby, Kansas, uh -huh. um, on our way there, and we stayed at the ho the, ho the hotel we stayed at, and um, like they had they had breakfast the next day, but most hotels like have a breakfast buffet. Yeah, yeah. We know that most hotels have a breakfast buffet. <clears throat> mm. Well, they did not have a breakfast buffet. We um, they had a, they had a table set up, and it was very much um, they had all of their food items behind them, and none of them were hot. So it was, do you what would you like? Would you like a muffin? Would you like one of those tear off cereals? Um, would you like a banana? Would you like coffee? And then someone had to serve that to us. Mm. And their question was, do you want to, do you want to eat that in your room or do you want to eat that to go? So then they gave us a tray, <laughs> which we took upstairs and we <clears throat> sat very uncomfortably on our bed <laughs> and had each had a cup of cereal and each, each had our food. Um, wow. Yeah, it, it was yeah. flexibility. Yep. And then on the and then on the way back, we stopped in um, not Grand Island, but the next um, North Platte. North Platte. We stopped in North Platte, and uh, we went to Raising Canes. Uh huh. And only their drive-through was open. Yeah, yeah. When we went to Omaha, that's what we did. We we just went through drive-throughs. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. it just it requires. It requires flexibility. So then we had to find a place because in North in North Platte, our plan was we were going to find a place to eat. We were going to go to the we were going to use the you know use the bathroom. <laughs> yep, yep. Just what you wanted to hear us talk about. Um, and so we were going to do that at Raising Canes. Well, we had to go through the drive-through. Then we had to find someplace else um, to do the rest of to do the rest of what we had planned for that stop. Yeah. So yeah. so this this time has required flexibility is a really good word. Um, that this is required of us yeah um, to do yeah I think yeah I was just we were just visiting a little bit earlier this morning there's a, there's there's been so many different things happen um, and we can look at this from different angles we can look at it as 
as really being a terrible time mm-hmm. um, and lots of bad things happening. Or we can look at it from the other angle of there are a lot of good things happening. Yeah. There are a lot of, of um, ways that we've had to examine how we do things and, and make choices. Um, since we're not allowed to do them the way that we used to, how can we do them well? Yeah. And, um, and that's, that's a good thing. I, I think it's good for us to be challenged in what we're doing and how we're doing it. I think God does that in a lot of ways. I think he places people in our lives that do that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're a little frustrating to be around. <laughs> but on the other hand, sometimes that's that person that you love the most that uh, we've given the, the right to do that with. Mm-hmm. And, and it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's part of why God didn't mean for us to be alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, none of that had anything to do with what we talked about today. So, here, so we've been, well, actually it kind of does, because yeah. it transitions. Uh-huh. Which is what we've been talking about here at Westway for the, for the month of June. We're mm-hmm. finishing up. This series on Sunday, yep. we're talking about Ezra and Nehemiah. Yeah. And the big picture, um, in case you're watching this and you have no idea what we're talking about, the big picture of what we're talking about is just transitions, because as we just spent the last almost 10 minutes talking about, was the transition that we've been in over the last several months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we talked about the Babylonian exile in the Old Testament. And primarily, we learn about the Babylonian exile in lots of places, but primarily the, the things that we focused on were, um, were part of the book of Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. Um, that was sort of the run-up to the exile itself. Right. And then right. we had Daniel's story, and then we had Esther's story last week. And then again, next Sunday, we're going to talk about Ezra and Nehemiah and... I've called that I've called that one the new normal, which is the phrase that no one likes. Um, but it's reality because it is because they because yeah. now they're going to return home. And yeah. and one of the things that one of the things that's come out of the last three weeks messages, we see this um, we see this tension. So I used that word on Sunday. Yeah. yeah, we see this tension between of within people who have been sent into exile, and on one hand, they're told to become involved <clears throat> and engaged yeah. in, in the culture of of Babylon. Yeah, make homes, plant gardens, right? Um, do the best you can to right. make a good life there. Right. And at the same time, they are not to become Babylonians. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was that was that message from Daniel um, as Christians. You, I'm sure you've heard it used. I know I've said it. How, what does it look like for me to be in the world but not of the world as right. a Christian? So right. the way I, I frame that up is, so, so what does it look like for Daniel to be in Babylon but not of Babylon? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What does that look like for Esther to be in Babylon and yeah. not of, but of Babylon? So how do, we, yeah. how do we navigate that tension? And, and the, the, the words that I used... To describe both of those, I used two. I used the word empire, yeah, and I used the word kingdom, yeah. So kingdom, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flip them. Kingdom is God's kingdom, right, right. Empire, <laughs> from a Babylonian perspective, empire, <laughs> Babylon was an empire. Yeah. And then I would say, and this is how I used it this Sunday. Yeah, I didn't yeah. do it the first Sunday, but this is how I used it this Sunday. Just about anything else, any other nation state, yeah. any other political entity, then is empire. Yeah, and that, if I remember right, it came from a conversation that you had with someone after the previous yeah. Sunday uh, talking about the United States right. being an empire. Right, and I, and that was yes. Yeah, so that was the word that was the word I used on Sunday. Uh-huh. The um, the uh, either the American Empire or the Empire of America, mm-hmm. as opposed to God's kingdom. And that I think that can be really 
um, unsettling to people. Yeah. To hear, to hear someone refer to America as an empire in the same context as Babylon as an empire. Yeah. Yeah. It can be. I mean, it, it is to me. It when I when I was in sitting listening to that in the auditorium Sunday morning, um, you know, thoughts went through my head. The word empire makes you think of supreme authority. Yeah. In some sense, it's, I mean, it's a connotation that we put yeah. with it. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's the word that, as you were talking, that's what I was thinking of. There, em, that word empire, to utilize that word empire in the way that I intentionally did, <laughs> in, like, it has a connotation to it. And yeah. it's, not a good, it's not a good one. It shouldn't be. <laughs> um, unless it's a kingdom with the king of kings and lord of lords in charge. Yeah. Which, yeah. Which is why I use those two words, not interchangeably. Yeah. Kingdom and empire. I was, I was very, I tried to be very clear in differentiating between the two. And whatever tension you were feeling, um, as a, as from, like, I could feel it. Yeah. And that's why I commented on it at one point. <laughs> like, I, I could sense in the room, like, okay, I am, I am pressing mm-hmm. on people's understanding right now. Yeah. Of, of how they think they're, their nation state, their government functions, and how, and what its relationship is, on a on a on a spiritual scale or on a much grander scale. I could tell that I was pressing pretty yeah. hard on that. Um, and I, yeah, and I, it's it, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. So a few days in, I'm not I'm not certain how I actually I know exactly how I feel but I'm not sure I want to make sure that I express myself properly yeah there was a there was a moment when the question went through my mind has gone through my mind does John not like the United States does John not like America <laughs> I'll ask that <laughs> I'll so, put you on the spot. <laughs> so I, I did deliberately wear my Captain America shirt today. Um, boy, okay, do I like America? Yes. Yes, I love America. Yeah. Because um, you did say I'm, I'm very thankful to be yeah. able to live in this yeah. country. You know, I, I, yeah. uh, I, I was actually thinking about this in anticipation of this conversation today because I knew this is what we were going to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, 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 I was wondering myself like where did where does my sense of where does my sense of uh, being an American come from um, I don't I don't remember ever um, I, I don't really feel like I ever had a conversation from anyone my parents never pulled me aside and said John this is what it means to be an American hmm. I think I yeah. think I think like many of us um, it's just the air we breathe. Like mm-hmm. this, this is where we were born. Yeah. So we just we. It's some. It's something that we're born into. It's not a. For at least for me, it it really wasn't a choice. Mm-hmm. Um, it was something that I was born into. Yeah. Um, so this sense of this sense of identity that I find as an American um, is is not something that was chosen. I think I can choose it now. Certainly wasn't chosen at a young age, um, and like I am, yes, am I? Do I like being an American? Do I love being an American? Yes. Yeah. Um, on the Fourth of July, if you were to drive by my house, um, you will most likely see an American flag mm-hmm. hanging outside my house because I because I, like this is a part of my identity. Yeah. Um, and I would say the tension for me then comes in, what is my primary identity? Yes. The word that came into my mind as you were talking on Sunday morning was allegiance. And I, man, did I use that word on purpose. So I'm thankful <laughs> that you just said that. And, and, and there have been times recently <laughs> where, because on Sunday mornings in children's church for years now, um, we have started out Sunday morning children's church with the Pledge of Allegiance mm. to the flag. 
and to the, to the American flag, to the Christian flag, and to the Word of God. Uh, it's something that when I was principal of the Christian school, that's what we did there. Uh, when, we've, when we've had uh, VBS, we've done it there. Um, and it's a good thing. I still believe that. But... <laughs> I knew you were going to say but. <laughs> when I think about where I give my allegiance, and I was looking for this passage. I had it earlier, and I thought I'd written it down, but I didn't. Um, there is a passage, and I, and I believe it's in, in, uh, in Timothy, um, where it talks about our allegiance is to mm-hmm. God. And, and he's, he's telling Timothy, Paul is telling Timothy, that's where your allegiance needs to be. It comes on the tale of be careful of uh, falling trap to um, the things that sound good to you. Yeah. And that's obviously Peterson paraphrase, but, yeah. but he, and then he goes into, he says, but your allegiance, our allegiance, he says, is to God. And I, and I think using that, so again, I was intentional in using that word allegiance on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think in utilizing that, that word, that obviously presses on it because you said pledge of allegiance to the American flag. Yeah. Yeah. But like, so how, so wow. Like what, how, how much discomfort and tension does that then cause us to use that knowing that i'm going to play okay let's just let's just talk language yeah i pledge allegiance to the united states of america Mm -hmm. wow is like that's an that's a that is an incredible statement yeah that we would say, and and maybe you're watching this, and I know there's not a lot of people watching this. Maybe you're going to watch this later, and this is going to make you really uncomfortable. It and makes me uncomfortable. It, it does <laughs> because because th- because this right now this this text that we have been talking about for the last three weeks, I think is forcing us. It's forcing me. Maybe it's not forcing you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's forcing me to confront. Um, the reality of what of what and where my allegiance is. Yes, yes. And yeah, I, I and I said this the first week, and I didn't say it the second. I did. I said it the week before last. I didn't say it this week. I said something like, "It's possible to be a good American and a bad Christian, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's possible to be a good Christian and a bad American." Mm-hmm. And I think again that if that presses on you. Man, good because because I think there is a way to demonstrate an allegiance to a nation state that puts me against the gospel. Yeah, we have to be careful to evaluate what that allegiance is. Yeah, what it means to us when we say it. I think we need to be careful to define that to yeah. people. I know that I've had conversation with the kids when we say the pledge of allegiance. The only reason that I can say the pledge of allegiance is because of the phrase in there. One nation under God, mm-hmm. which I know was added later right. to the Pledge of Allegiance, but I'm glad it was because as long as we are a nation that strives to follow mm-hmm. God, then I will pledge allegiance to a nation that strives to follow God. Yeah. Um, when we turn away from God, then my allegiance isn't there. It's to God. The yeah. allegiance is to God. And so, like I said, lately that's been a challenge mm-hmm. for me because I've seen a tendency for our nation to make a change mm-hmm. as a whole. And this is, I mean, and this is not about, um, I mean, I would say this is not about political party or anything like that. I mean, no, we're, we're going to, not for me. We're, we're hitting that later this year. <laughs> um, we're going to hit that later this year. Yeah. But, but I, I think what we've seen in these stories of, of Jeremiah, Daniel, and Esther is people who, again, to use the phrase that we said earlier, who are in Babylon but not of Babylon. Right. So they had to function within this, they had to function within this system that was not of God. Yeah. Yet they had to function in in a lot of ways as ambassadors of of that thing that was not of God. Think about Daniel. Yeah. Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, as they rose up, they were given more authority, mm-hmm. more power, more control over different things. And they were functioning as, the word is not 
ambassadors not used in the text. Right. But essentially, they're functioning as ambassadors of a nation that is wicked. Yeah, and and the reason that they were placed in the position they were placed in was that they might be able to have an effect yeah. on on that place they were at. Yeah, and and Daniel used his spot to continue. To, uh, the phrase that I used was "speak truth to power." Yeah, he used his role as ambassador of Babylon for the good of Babylon. Mm-hmm. Actually, yep. Yep. By te- by telling the leader of Babylon, hey, you're a sinner, and if you don't, and this is the Mulholland and Bear phrase, <laughs> and if you don't repent, like you need to listen to what I'm saying. And we see that in Scripture yeah. over and over. Joseph mm-hmm. was also in a position of slavery, um, but because of the way he honored God and the way he lived his life, right. um, he was rewarded for that and was able then to have influence right. um, that helped the country that he was in, it helped Egypt. Um, we see that with Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because they lived their lives for God. Yeah. They were recognized as being um, very wise and and good. Mm-hmm. And and so they were rewarded with better positions. Right. Um, and, and it helped the people of Babylon. Yeah. But it also showed the leader of Babylon who the true God was. Yeah. Which is really interesting to me. <clears throat> yeah, and that's where, and that's what we talked about on Sunday. And this, this might have been in the Q&A when we hit this part when we were talking a little bit about Caesar. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the reason that the Christians were persecuted by Rome was not, it was, it was not because, um, it was not because they worshipped God or worshipped Jesus as God. Because the Romans had a number of gods. Yeah, like you can, they did. Yeah, you can have it. However, you can have you can worship however you want to mm-hmm. within Rome. But what you have to understand in a Roman political context is that Caesar is ultimately God. Right. So feel free to worship your. We talked about this um, last year when we went through the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. Feel free to, to to worship your localized, regionalized gods. All you want to, but Caesar is God, capital G. Yeah, yeah. And for the Christians, that like they would not assent to worshiping Caesar as God, and that's what got them. That's what got them persecuted. That's yeah. what got them killed. Yeah. yeah. So, so then for us, our like then that creates back that tension. Then mm-hmm. for us, is who and what are we? ultimately pledging our allegiance to yes. and how how do we do that yeah um in ways that like we can still honor our, i think we can honor our nation we're told to mm-hmm. we're told to in in romans chapter 13 mm-hmm. um let me read just a just a real quick little deal everyone must submit to governing authorities for all authority comes from god and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted and they will be punished. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, which is interesting, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right and they will honor you. So, (laughs) so, let me, ask, let me ask a real world scenario because of the text you just read. Okay. The government of the United States says it is illegal for you to have certain kinds of guns. What is your, as a Christian, having just read Romans 13, <laughs> and we're going to get way more into this later in the year. Yeah. What, as a Christian, Romans 13. What is what's what's my role as a Christian in that scenario where yeah. the government says, "Hey, you can't have certain kind of guns." It says submission. That's tough. That's hard, and especially in a country that was formed on people leaving or rebelling against authorities. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> To gain their own freedom. There is, there is, when you, 
So one of the things that I've found in, in thinking about government, mm-hmm. if when, once you start to like scratch through the scratch through the surface a little bit, this gets really messy. Yeah, it it, it makes me think of what Jesus said to um, was it was it Peter that asked him about taxes, mm. and 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 he told him to go go to fishing <laughs> and catch the fish and give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Yeah. But he also said, give to God what is God's. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and the physical part may belong to Caesar. Mm-hmm. The spiritual part belongs to God. Allegiance belongs to God. Yeah. Uh, the ultimate authority in my life is God. And um, it was also um, the, uh, I'm trying to think of the story. Uh, don't you know I must, Jesus said, don't you know I must be about my father's mm-hmm. business to his parents mm-hmm. when he was teaching in the, in the uh, temple. Um, and they wanted him to come home with them and do what he should be obedient to them. And, and Jesus at that point illustrated how there is a greater authority in our lives, an ultimate authority, mm-hmm. and that is God. Yeah, it's not Rome. It's not Rome. It's not. It's not the. It's not the Empire not of the United States. <laughs> yeah. I mean this. Yeah, I mean this. The, it really is, and, and that's why we wanted to just chat a little bit about this today. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not. This isn't a comfortable conversation. But but going back to your question about the guns, that's that's a that's a that's a hard one for me, um, because of what I said about. Uh, it being a nation that has freedoms mm. and the freedoms are being taken away. Um, but that's still physical. Mm. I think about people who live in countries where those things have been taken away for a long time. Yeah. Um, they, the Christians in those areas really truly understand what it means to submit to God. Mm. And to place him first. Mm. Um, and the sacrifices that they've made to do that has brought persecution yeah. in their life. And I think the apostles went through that in, in the time. And it's interesting, not so much by the government as it was by the leaders of the church right. that orchestrated that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's so much that we're, it's so yeah. deep what we're into right now. Yeah. I, I think, um, some things, some things going forward for me, like, um, just in terms of thinking about this, um, that might help us navigate what this tension looks like. Um, I was listening to, um, so, you know, I love the Bible project. Yeah, I do too. Um, and I, I was listening, we listened to a number of podcasts from the Bible Project last week <laughs> while we were driving. We had 20 plus hours of drive time, so it was lots of Bible Project. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I went back and actually listened, because um, they have a series on exile, Yeah, um, which is really excellent. And, and the, one, the only one that I listened to was The Way of the Exile, How to Be an Exile. And they talked about Daniel and they talked about Esther. Mm-hmm. And they they use two phrases or two words to describe them: um, uh, loyal and subversive. Interesting. So 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 the way of the exile is hmm. is to be, um, and I don't remember what the order is that that they put them in, but the way of the exile, the way to be in Babylon but not of Babylon, is to be loyally subversive. So I can be loyal. To a point, and, yeah. and that was Daniel. Yeah, yeah. right. I, yeah. I can be loyal to a point. Mm-hmm. Um, I can say and I can do all of these things, but there's going to be a point where I'm not going to do it. But I can also be subversive. And what's interesting, and I only just thought of this right now, um, when Daniel was told to, when when they in the scene when Daniel was was going to pray. Yeah, like yeah. what's interesting is when Daniel prayed to God, he didn't do it in a public way. He went and did it privately. He went to his own room. So how? So, but he did go to the window. Yeah, but that, but that, but that's. I I think he yeah. was being loyal. Yes, I think he was being loyal 
to I don't remember if it was ne- whatever king it was. Like there's 14 different names. <laughs> Whichever king it was, yeah. he was loyal in that he did not go on the street corner right. and, and right. face Jerusalem and pray three times. He didn't times try to mislead anybody. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. I, I think, and again, yeah. I've only just, like in this conversation, I'm only yeah. now thinking. Yeah. He was loyal to the empire mm-hmm. in being subversive by going and doing it somewhere else. Yeah. And he, yeah, or he was, he was also subversive by not bowing to the empire, yes, but doing it in private. Yeah, and it's interesting that the other officials who were jealous, yeah, of Daniel because they couldn't find anything wrong with him, right? And the king liked him mm-hmm. because he couldn't find anything wrong with him. That that's an interesting <clears throat> part to that. Yeah, it just is an example of of it does pay to honor God yeah. in what we do. Um, and so they said, the only way that we're going to get this guy to not be in the king's favor is through his religious practices. Right. Because they knew his loyalty. Yeah. Um, and they knew that he wouldn't pray to anybody else. Right. Yeah. And then, and then also, I, I think that same way from an Esther standpoint of being loyally subversive, Mordecai comes to her and says, hey, you have to go and talk to the king. And what does she say? I can't because if I go in, because no one's There's allowed to just law. walk in. There's a law. So, so what's interesting then is what she did was she kind of waited out in the hallway. And I, like in my, in my mind's eye, what I'm seeing is the king sitting up on his throne and this, like this long throne room. Yeah. And the door open at the end. And Esther just kind of like, like walking by the door, like wanting to be seen. <laughs> yeah. Kind of thing. Like, uh, like maybe your kids have done that. I know my kids oh, have yeah. done that. Like <laughs> when they're trying to get my attention and they know they're not like just supposed to, you know, walk up and do something. Mm-hmm. They'll kind of like do something in the background and like wait for, oh, oh, hey, come on in. So like in my mind's <laughs> eye, like that's what I see is. Um, is King Xerxes sitting on his throne in this big throne room with the door open and Esther just kind of strolling by. And since it had been 30 days, he's yeah. like, oh, I haven't seen her in 30 days. Hey, <laughs> Esther, come here for a second. Come talk yep. to me. Yep. yep. So that, so that's, that's she's loyal in that yeah. she knows she can't just bounce into the throne room. Yeah. But she's subversive. Mm-hmm. In that loyalty. It's a good way to think about it. Yeah. In a respectful way. Yeah. <clears throat> she honored yeah. she honored God and she honored the Empire. Mm-hmm. She played according to the rules that the Empire had set for her. Mm-hmm. Even though sometimes those rules might be a little tough to Yeah. As far as physically honor. <clears throat> right. Yeah. And then, um, and then I listened to, um, I started listening to the, uh, <clears throat> the current podcast, the current Bible Project podcast series. I'm reading the letters. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and, I listened to one this morning. Um, well, it, <clears throat> this week <throat> they talked about how, um, how the purpose of the purpose of the New Testament letters, and for that matter, the entire Bible. Right. <clears throat> I didn't get to this point in the podcast. It was in the beginning, but they said the purpose of the New Testament letters is not is not to give us a moral and ethical teaching. It is to increase our and they use the word allegiance yeah. to God. Yeah. So there's yeah. that there's that word that comes right back around to what we were talking about at the very beginning. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> is my is my reading and learning about God merely making me more moral and ethical or is it increasing my allegiance to god right it yeah the bottom line is the allegiance there are there are benefits of that allegiance because of who he is and how he has set it up with us when we're elite when we give our allegiance to him and honor him there are benefits of that and I would also say there are consequences. And there are because, consequences. Because the more, yeah. the more yeah. my allegiance to God is awakened and lived out, the more tension I'm going to feel 
when I feel my allegiance pulled elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so if I'm more allegiant to the kingdom today, chances are I'm going to feel more tension when the empire of America demands my allegiance. Yeah, yeah. So this, yeah. maybe, I, maybe, <clears throat> maybe this tension I'm feeling and you're feeling is because our allegiance is being, as, as Christians, our allegiance is being more focused on God and his kingdom, which then makes me wonder, oh, well, why do I say the Pledge of Allegiance? Mm-hmm. Maybe I need to examine that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe I really need to wrestle with that. Yeah. And not just dismiss it mm-hmm. offhand. Yeah, and I, and I think it's the same kind of tension that we should feel when... <clears throat> Our uh, governing authorities are taking um, the opportunities to worship away from us. Mm. Um, wh- however that may be, mm-hmm. whether it be taking the Ten Commandments out of a building or, or um, removing, not, not, not allowing Scripture in school or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I, think, I think that that comes back to that allegiance part of all right so where is my allegiance right and who am I putting first Mm -hmm. in my life Mm -hmm. and having been in the military yeah I mean you have a (laughs) you have an incredible I mean you have an incredible perspective on this I Um, I remember when an individual came to me and said hey I'm thinking about enlisting in the reserves. What do you think about that? Mm. And I said, well, you know, I have always thought about that also. (laughs) And we ended up doing it, but there was a long process that we went through in making that decision and asking each other, can we do this and still Mm. be giving our allegiance to God? Mm. And it wasn't easy coming to that decision. And there were times in the 11 and a half years that I was in that um, I questioned it. Hmm. Am I being put in a position where I'm giving up my my first allegiance? Hmm. And I really had to pray through that and choose my words carefully. I was an instructor for a while. Um, when I instructed, I tried to choose my word, word very carefully as to why I did what I did. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it came down to the nation under God mm-hmm. principle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to defend that freedom um, in our country. And I, I think one of, the, <clears throat> one of the things in that is we're, and this is where things get kind of abstract. I mean, we're talking about I don't want to put words in your mouth. What, I, what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing you say is, um, we're we're doing these things in with the mindset of of an ideal and an idea, rather than how it practically plays out. Because I think, yeah. like I think, I think that's fair. Um, yeah, you know, we have. Yeah, we're not going to talk about. We're not going to go down this path. Um, <laughs> But I mean, I, and this is what we talked about two weeks ago. Uh, our nation was founded upon a set of ideas and ideals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the ones that I specifically talked about was that each person has a right to a free tr- to, a, to a fair trial. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's due process. Mm-hmm. And, and to that ideal, I think as Christians, we can be... That gives us an opportunity to maybe be outspoken about things that violate that ideal. Right. Right. So yeah. So can I can I be can I can I pledge allegiance to that kind of ideal? And I think the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also not um, you know whatever whatever the empire of America does, I'm going to be wholeheartedly behind it because. Because what's interesting that that Romans text you read, and this we're going to get more into this in in uh, October. Mm-hmm. But in that Romans text, you know, as in our context, we are 
like what's interesting about our context is Romans says, um, you know, God has appointed that authority over us, that governmental authority over us. In our context, we are the government. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have, we then have a role. So, like wielding the sword, and I, that wasn't that what you, that wasn't what your translation said. But I think the NIV says something like, mm-hmm. "Government has the authority to wield the sword." What's interesting about our context is then we have a say in how the sword gets wielded. Mm-hmm. So we want to take that seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we want to be we we want to be involved and engaged in what that looks like. So we have a say. So we have an opportunity when we see when we see our empire straying from the ideals and ideas mm-hmm. that that may, and boy, I'm sounding like pro-American right now. <laughs> when, when we when we see our empire stray from the ideals and the ideas that made her great. Yes. Yeah. We have a role a responsibility. Thank you. Yeah. Even better. We have a responsibility to speak truth to that power. Yes. And say this is not consistent with the ideals and ideas of our founding. Yeah. Yeah. And I can do that in good conscience. Yes. Yes. Because um, without violating an allegiance to God. Right. Yeah. And that, and see, that's what we've said already. That's where it really gets sticky sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's that's what. That's the only reason I can say the pledge the way I do. Yeah. <laughs> so um, well. yeah, so <laughs> so yes, I do love America. Um, yeah. To cl- cl- qualify that, and my allegiance, and my and ult- but ultimately, yet ultimately. My allegiance is not to America. No. As a Christian, my allegiance is to God. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And that, that's where my allegiance mm-hmm. lies, lays, however you <laughs> the proper <laughs> verb form of that is. Yeah. Um, so this week, we're going to finish out our series um, on transitions. Yeah. We're talking about Ezra and Nehemiah. Um, I would encourage you if you have if you have not read Ezra and Nehemiah, um, do it. It's as I said on Sunday. It's an, it's a pretty easy read. It's a quick read. Um, there's there's some a, a ton of things that John's not going to have time to get to on Sunday. Yep, we are not. And and but if you go and you read it beforehand, you'll see how that ties in yeah. to what we're talking about yeah. um, this week and. And it's, it's an amazing story about people who came to a realization that there's some changes that need to be made. And what's our part in that? Yeah. Which is our time. Yeah. There are changes. Oh, yeah. When we look at what's yeah. currently happening in America, mm-hmm. whether we're talking coronavirus and the way government has been involved and engaged in that, or Mm -hmm. we're looking at racism in America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there are changes that are taking place, and how are we going to be involved in them? Yeah. What's our role in them? What's our responsibility in them? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I was gonna gonna say one of my favorite parts is the way they did the wall. Yeah. I'm not gonna say it anymore. You gotta go look it up. Because I don't don't know if we're gonna talk about that on on Sunday, like you said. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that we're going to talk about it. Yeah. Um, so you, re- I would highly recommend you got to go read it. You read Ezra and Nehemiah. So thanks for watching today. Um, we love doing this, and we are appreciative of you watching and your participation. Um, I would I would say it was awesome to see um, the faces on Sunday morning mm-hmm. um, here in the auditorium, um, but it's also um, good to know that there are many of you. Uh, that are able to uh, watch and, and be a part of the service at the same time we're doing it here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was good to hear. We heard some feedback from some people about how it just seemed really neat to be able to take communion together, mm-hmm. uh, even while they were at home. Yep. Um, make sure you've got that ready before service starts. Yep. So you don't have to miss out on any part of the service yep. to go get it ready. <laughs> <Yep>. <clears throat> well, hey, thanks for watching with us today. Um, And we'll see you throughout the rest of this week, if not on Sunday. And um, we'll see you. God bless. Have a good rest of your day.